Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. Before we begin, we invite you to watch this special message from our President and CEO, Dr. Karen Lee. Over 100,000 Canadians live with Parkinson's. We have one of the highest rates in the world. My name is Karen Lee. I'm the CEO of Parkinson Canada. My late grandfather lived with Parkinson's disease, and I know very well the importance of family and how they have to come together to support one another, but most importantly, the person living with Parkinson's. That is why I am dedicated and committed to ensuring Parkinson Canada continues to empower those living with Parkinson's. Each year, our programs and services reach over 10,000 people. We are a community. We are here not only for the person living with Parkinson's, but their family, friends, and their care network to ensure we all continue to thrive. Our advocacy efforts are focused on raising the voices of people affected by Parkinson's. Our Parkinson Advisory Council is made up of people affected by Parkinson's from across the country. They bring a diverse background and experience, but most importantly, they provide me and the organization with advice on topics that are important to them and their community. As a scientist, I know the importance of investing in bold and novel ideas that lead to breakthrough discoveries. At the same time, bringing researchers, clinicians, and people living with Parkinson's to collaborate, to push the needle in our understanding of Parkinson's disease. We invest in the next generation of researchers and clinicians to ensure that we continuously understand the Parkinson's disease and also the care management of people affected by Parkinson's. When I'm in the community, I want people to know that Parkinson Canada is with them and every step of their journey with Parkinson's disease. People often ask, when is the right time to connect with Parkinson Canada? Is it when they have their first diagnosis? Is it when their symptoms get worse? Or is it when they need more information and resources? The answer is now. Researchers and clinicians are working tirelessly to find a cure. Meanwhile, every single day, 25 more Canadians are diagnosed with Parkinson's. Our goal is to empower people affected by Parkinson's to live well now. Welcome everyone to this month's webinar, Introducing Every Victory Counts Canadian Edition, sponsored by MERS Therapeutics and Paladin Labs. My name is Donna Greening and I'm a Programs and Services Coordinator at Parkinson Canada. Before we begin, I have just a few housekeeping items. From coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territories of Inuit, Métis and First Nations peoples. We have enabled closed captioning for the benefit of attendees who may be hearing impaired. You can turn on or off closed captioning on your own screen by clicking on the CC live transcript button and then clicking on show subtitle or hide subtitle. Please note that this feature uses auto transcription, so there might be some spelling errors along the way. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see Q&A and chat buttons. While we don't have time in today's schedule to field questions, feel free to use the chat feature to talk amongst yourselves. Now, let's get started. The production of Every Victory Counts Canadian Edition was made possible by the collaborative efforts over many months by staff teams from both Parkinson Canada and the Davis Finney Foundation. This incredible partnership is one that both organizations are very proud of, proving that by working together, we can deliver a robust resource filled with trusted and credible information, inspiring stories and practical tools to you, the people we serve. We will start off with a welcome from the leaders of these two organizations. First, you will hear from Dr. Karen Lee, President and CEO of Parkinson Canada. Next, we will hear from Polly Dawkins, Executive Director of the Davis Finney Foundation. 
Polly holds an MBA in International Business from Thunderbird School of Global Management and a BA in International Studies from Earl Ham College. She brings 25 years of for-profit and nonprofit experience to the Davis Finney Foundation. Polly is passionate about helping people with Parkinson's thrive by providing education and connection to community and funding quality of life research that take the guesswork out of living well. Welcome, Karen and Polly. Thank you, Donna. It's a pleasure to be here um, and to also um, have Polly um, here with me. I have to say, I joined the organization now for the last two years. It's been two and a half years. But when I first joined, um, I heard a lot from the community about this wonderful resource called Every Victory Counts. Um, and that's really how I was led uh, to uh, the Davis Finney Foundation. And through some great conversations uh, with Polly and the desire for Parkinson Canada to partner with everyone who's doing anything on Parkinson's, we recognized um, there was an opportunity here. Um, many people in Canada told me how the Every Victory Count manual was so important to them. But what was interesting was that um, because the Davis Finney Foundation is in the United States, it was geared towards uh, people who are used to the American healthcare system. And as we know, it's very different here in Canada. So with that, with the manual, there wasn't any, what I would say, direct linkage of how to get the help you need here in Canada. So we thought, what a great way to come together with an organization to create Canadian content. Now, we all know it doesn't matter where the cure comes from or where the treatments are, but we wanna make sure people can access them. And that is why we decided to partner with the Davis Finney Foundation to create the Every Victory Counts Canadian edition. It took a few months, um, almost a year to get to where we are today, but I know I'm so excited to be here today. I know about this time uh, last year, Polly and I uh, discussed how would this work, and I am just so delighted that our teams came together and were able to deliver this to the Canadian community. So with that, I want to thank everyone um, who has participated um, in developing this Every Victory Counts manual, but most importantly to our partner, uh, the Davis Finney Foundation, and to Polly for working closely with us to bring this to the Canadian community. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Polly. Thank you, Karen. I too am incredibly excited about this partnership and about the, the new Every Victory Counts manual for, for Canadians. When, when we launched the Every Victory Counts manual about 12 years ago, we never could have imagined that it would have the impact or scope that it does today. And, and we today we have 50,000 of uh, the manuals out in the world, many of which live in Canada in your hands. However, as Karen said, they, this was not entirely 100% um, appropriate for our friends in Canada and the cost of shipping and getting this and distributing this manual in Canada was a burden that uh, our friends in Canada were, were picking up. And taking that access, uh, that barrier away to give more people access to this resource at no cost um, is really exciting for both of our organizations. And this partnership speaks highly to sort of Karen's leadership and vision for how uh, Canadians can have access to this resource without duplicating efforts in, in the world. Um, we're proud of, of the authentic voices that have been brought into the manual in, in uh, Canada and um, really how it feels like a trusted resource that you all know that it hasn't changed that drastically that when you pick it up, it's not the same thing if you already have one that you know and love and trust and find the resources. It's only more welcoming, more inclusive and more helpful for all of you. So we are beyond thrilled that this partnership um, exists and that you all in Canada will continue to get this resource um, for your you, your families, and all of your loved ones who are searching for the question, 
how can I take charge of my well-being? How can I take charge of my own health? And um, what can I do today to live well with Parkinson's? So thank you to, to Parkinson's Canada, to all of you who participated in this partnership. Um, I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen and Polly. We are now going to hear from Kelly Williams, who is going to show you a few parts of the manual, including some really useful worksheets. Kelly has over 19 years of nursing experience with her nine, with, her, with the last nine years in the role of clinical resource nurse at the Movement Disorder Clinic in Winnipeg. Kelly co-created and implemented an early Parkinson's course, uh, advanced therapy program, a get it on time program and a Parkinson's management kit for hospital staff. In her daily work, she provides education and counseling for those newly diagnosed, as well as continued support for healthy living and the ongoing needs of people living with Parkinson's, including medication management. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you very much, Donna. Okay, I'm gonna try and share my screen here. That works. All right, thank you very much for being there. And again, my name is Kelly. I am the clinical resource nurse in the Movement Disorder Clinic in Winnipeg. Um, and I'm gonna just talk a little bit about different resources that are at your um, availability. Now, the thing that has mentioned and Polly had mentioned earlier, it really is just a matter of taking charge and how can you kind of take charge of that everyday life of about um, living well with Parkinson's. So I'll talk a little bit about your healthcare team and creating that, um, preparing and for those appointments with your healthcare team and how to work with some of those uh, Every Victory Counts worksheets. So when looking at using resources, like what does this mean? Uh, why do we even bother? The resources and the tools are what we use to actually get what we need to optimize our quality of life. They are what help us live our best lives, whether that be a physical change, whether that be medically, whether it be emotionally or socially. And these tools come in many different formats or people such as worksheets or support groups or groups, uh, clinical nurse. Um, there are many different resources that are available to us and now it's just a matter of how to access them, um, how to incorporate them um, and how to use them in your everyday life to kind of optimize the situation. Now, looking at your healthcare team, these are a group of people, a um, group of professionals who manage every aspect of your health. Uh, this includes your family physician, your movement disorder specialist or neurologist, your nurse, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, social, uh, speech language pathologist, social worker, dietitian, dentist, optometrist, uh, endocrinologist, anything else like in that line. Uh, everyone who is there to help out in some aspect of your health or quality of life. Having a team is always helpful than just trying to be only one person. No one person can do it all. That includes your family physician or even just on your own. We all need help. So these individuals in your healthcare team are meant to be experts in their fields that generally very willing to help offer their support, um, their education and information, but you have to take those steps to take charge and actually work with them and access them. Living with Parkinson's is challenging. We all know this. It has its ups and downs, these weird and wonderful symptoms, emotional, psychological roller coasters, and some wonderful highs and some pretty hard lows. We do what we can to do just find that quality of life, that good quality of life. It's actually what everybody always strives for, whether you have Parkinson's or not. But when Parkinson's is in the mix, there are some definite special considerations that we are all quite familiar with. And each person has their own unique challenges, obstacles, or talents to work with or deal with that the healthcare professional may actually not be aware of. So in order to kind of have that good quality of life with Parkinson's, it just tends to take a little bit more work, um, a little bit more planning and a little bit more creativity. And that's where a lot of these different resources can be very helpful. You need to be that instrumental partner within optimizing your quality of life. You need to take control of the situations that are around you. The team is there to help you, but they can only provide expertise on the disease you need to be the expert on you. 
When creating a healthcare team, you need to all be that active partner within this partnership. Um, this definitely is a partnership between yourself, your care partner, and your healthcare team members. And as I said, you need to be the, that expert on you. So take that active role and share your expertise. There's information that only you can provide um, on what is happening with you. The doctor generally gets a snapshot, a 15 to 30 minutes every four to six months. It's really hard to finish a puzzle um, as there's no way you can have all of the pieces that you need for it. The information that you provide uh, uh, offers those essential pieces to the puzzle to tailor the treatment that is best for you and works within your specific needs. When working in this partnership, there is mutually agreed upon plans and strategies. Um, and when they are jointly agreed upon, this honestly does lead to improved well-being, health. And if you are part of those creating those plans or creating those strategies, you are far more likely to follow the plan in general. So being a part of it is really quite important. When maintaining a good partnership and relationship with your healthcare team, it's really very important to be honest. Um, if you're withholding information, whether you be um, embarrassed about it or fearful, the healthcare team can't provide accurate or objective information or treatments that may be available to you. So if you give all of the information, they're a lot better equipped to, to help you out. They don't know what's wrong unless you tell them what is wrong. So having these meaningful discussions with open honesty will allow for better long-term outcomes and it helps you feel much more in control of your plan and have improved emotional benefits. Being prepared, going to your appointment with no prep work is like going into a final exam without studying. You aren't gonna get what you want out of the experience. Make sure you go in with that list of questions, those details on how uh, you're doing, um, any changes in your symptoms or, or medication effects, um, any worries or concerns, issues or with treatments or information about new resources or new treatments that you have more, well, would like to discuss a little bit further. It's always a good idea to have an extra set of ears with you, um, to have your care partner or your friend, your sibling, whoever you feel the most comfortable with in your appointments, it's very important that they are there to be with you. They may remember things that you might not, um, or better yet, they might actually write down the details for you so you can refer back to them at a later time. Having someone with you, especially as things kind of get a little bit more complicated, can be very beneficial and is almost to a point of crucial. Don't forget, open and honest and very frank with your discussions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That is exactly what we are here for. Now, in looking at getting more prepared and being uh, more uh, ready for your upcoming appointments, there are many resources out there that can be very, very helpful to allow you to be more organized. Find the one that works best for you. Um, this may take a little bit of trial and error, but knowing that there are options can be very, very helpful. I honestly would suggest that you have yourself a health file. This is a place where you keep all of the information about what has happened to you with your health throughout your lifetime. This is very handy to have when things happen or if things go wrong and it's all at your finger, fingertips instead of trying to rely on your memory, especially in a crisis situation. So a health file can be very, very helpful. Now, this is where some of that planning and creativity comes into effect um, in creating a good quality of life. The Davis Finney Foundation Every Victory Counts manual also has these really wonderful worksheets that might help you out with some of that creativity um, to help you be prepared for your appointments, but also to help you manage on that day to day, reminding you of your different action plans that you are going to work with. Um, or for that matter, if they are working or what kind of changes you can work uh, do within them. Just giving you more tools to work with to take into your appointments. We'll go through some of these worksheets that are available, but there are many more to help with wellness and lifestyle. Um, there are some symptom checklists, some medical information snapshots, and now all of these worksheets and resources are available on the Parkinson Canada website to be printed out and used. 
Um, they are very, very good resources to print and keep in your health file and refer back to um, whenever you can. The first one we're going to look at is that Parkinson's care questionnaire. When looking at all of them, it's really quite important not to cram for the exam the night before. You need to try and look at this about a one to two weeks ahead of time um, so that you really kind of get a handle on it. And then if you have to think about some of the answers, you have the time to do so. So look again, again, about one to two weeks before your uh, appointment with your movement disorder specialist or your physiotherapist or your family physician or whoever it is on your healthcare team that you're seeing. The first section there is the goals of what are the goals of your appointment, medication changes, physio consult, urology appointment, have your goals set in mind, and then look at those top three most bothersome uh, problems that are dealing you are dealing with right now. Look at some of the past appointments that you have gone through. This is where your health file is very helpful. You can kind of refer back to what has happened in the past. Did you follow through with previous suggestions provided? Did you make the medications changes suggested or did that get a bit muddled? Um, did you follow that exercise plan that the physiotherapist created with you? These, uh, this is the biggest area that you need to really be honest in because you're, you need to be honest with yourself through this as well. Otherwise, change is a lot more challenging. If that strategy didn't work or if you didn't follow it, there might be a change in that strategy that would suit you better. So kind of go through it um, and try and see if honestly, did it really work? Did anything happen since your last appointment? Uh, did you add a new diagnosis, a, a hospitalization? These are all pieces of the puzzle that, are, puzzle that are very important for your healthcare professional. Don't forget to talk about social changes or any living arrangement that might have happened, um, anything about falls or uh, side effects. Uh, these are all things that are really important for your physician to be aware of. And then identify any problem symptoms, both mo motor and non-motor, that you're working with. There's lists of different motor, uh, non-motor symptoms, motor symptoms that you might not be completely aware of. And this worksheet is very helpful in kind of identifying some that might be problematic for you. So the next one, the sheet I'm going to go through is kind of that goal summary for the doctor's visits. This is where we honestly take those that uh, those goals set in the Parkinson's care questionnaire and apply it into question format for your physician. OK. And this is where you kind of look at when you're uh, um, actually meeting with your physician. Include these worksheets in the steps so you'll take to make sure you reach the goals that are set between yourself and the healthcare professional, whether they be pharmaceutical or non-pharmaceutical. And this is also where the health, uh, the, that health file can be very helpful. As you come back to this every now and again, every couple of months, did it work? Did that action plan work? Reevaluate um, the, the, the goals that are through there. What progress have you made to, uh, to achieve your goal? Um, did you actually follow through with some of them? Or do some things need to change to allow you to follow through better with them? Are you considering some of the different obstacles that happen through it as well? What are the areas where improvement is needed to reach your goal? This is really very helpful in developing those action plans to kind of work through it. Plan, execute, evaluate, and reevaluate, and change the plan as many times as you need to get to that end goal that you would like. This can be very, very helpful with that. Then we have the medication log. This is actually an incredible tool to work with to kind of really easily see what your medication schedule is and how it kind of mixes with other medications. Um, it can also help improve and simplify your medication regime on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so honestly, you should be coming back to this every time you have an appointment or if there's any kind of a change that you've made through your medications and see if it needs to be adjusted or changed or um, if there's a better way to kind of look at it. Keep in mind, this is also a great resource to bring to your appointments with you, whether it be with your movement disorder specialist or your family physician. It's a complete list of your medications and the timing that you're taking them. Or for that matter, if you end up in an emergency room, this is a real quick look as to what you're taking and what times you are taking them. It's really quite clear and concise. On a side note, um, it is really important and taking charge of your own health to uh, know what medications you actually are taking. 
Um, I'm, I can't tell you how many times I've been told it's the yellow pill or the little white one. <laughs> know the names of your medications, know what they do, know the dose that you're taking them. This is really helpful when uh, speaking with healthcare professionals, kind of speaking in the same language, speaking in um, lessening that confusion or uh, miscommunication that can possibly happen, then lessening the chance for mistakes. The overall medication log is actually really important for your file. This is kind of that medica medical history related directly to your medications. Um, what worked, what didn't work, why it didn't work, why did we stop it when you were on the medications and things and the benefits and uh, detriments that it's been having. So this is really helpful, especially if, for example, you tried in Tacopone 17 years ago and you thinking about, oh, we should try it again. Oh, no, 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 wait, I tried it before and it got really bad for me. This can be very helpful in remembering um, what happened when, when we don't always remember every medication we've ever been on. This is also especially helpful if for whatever happens, you need to change your doctor. This kind of uh, history can be very helpful. So the wellness self-assessment is another really great tool. Um, this is looking at more than just your Parkinson's. We are more than just Parkinson's disease. We are whole beings that have sometimes other problems along with our Parkinson's disease. Um, so this kind of looks over general points of wellness, areas that you would like to improve, and the steps you're going to take to improve them. So for example, when was the last time you saw your family physician uh, for a physical? Was it yearly or are you seeing them every three months now or because of COVID, has it been a couple of years? Uh, when was the last time you saw your optometrist? Um, make a priority list. So which ones are more important to be seeing sooner? Um, if you're falling very, very frequently, maybe we need to see your physiotherapist more before we see the, uh, uh, the dietitian, right? Make that priority list. Uh, make a plan to make those appointments and then follow through. Parkinson's self-care section is all about focusing on what you need to prepare uh, for that upcoming appointment and steps you would need to get ready for it. Um, or if there's something about your Parkinson's that you want to take a bit more charge on, like maybe your stooping posture, I really want to take a bit more charge on it. It's not a significant problem, but it's there. So this is where we uh, make the plan in that point. And again, revisit this in the future. And is it working? What can we change for it? So it looks at every uh, many different parts of it, your physical parts, your diet and your nutrition and your emotional health. Lifestyle changes are very challenging to make, even though we know how important it is to do when we need to optimize your quality of life. Uh, when you work with tools that are available for you uh, to try and prepare or for effective meetings uh, with your healthcare professionals, you really do increase a chance of creating that change that you want to see. The Every Victory Counts manual and worksheets are really great resources uh, to assist you with the planning and the creativity you need to optimize that quality of life. I really hope this has been helping you in a sense of identifying just another tool for your toolbox. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, that's, we've seen some really great resources that everyone can use to be able to live better with their Parkinson's. Um, now we're going to move on. I'm going to introduce you to Joe Vancouverden and Doug Picard, who are here today to share how the Every Victory Counts Manual has made a positive impact in the quality of life of people living with Parkinson's and empowering them to move towards a more person-centered approach when working with their healthcare teams. Jill Vancouverden is an ambassador for Parkinson Canada, as well as for the Davis Finney Foundation. Diagnosed over eight years ago with Parkinson's, Joe has developed many close friendships with others living with Parkinson's and is actively involved in volunteer roles. For the past five years, Joe has been active with Parkinson's at all levels. In 2019, he initiated and developed the program Yoga for Parkinson's. Joe is also a regular blogger about his life with Parkinson's on his personal blog, joewithpd.com. Doug Picard is the owner of Fluid Fitness in Parksville, BC, and is also a Davis Finney ambassador. 
About 14 years ago, Doug met someone living with Parkinson's who was looking to him, an exercise specialist, for help with her exercise program. Doug created a Parkinson's specific exercise class based on research on the benefits of exercise for people with Parkinson's. Later, Doug became a facilitator of the local Parkinson's support group and then became certified as a power moves and rock steady boxing coach. Once certified, he opened his own rock steady boxing affiliation. Today, Doug is expanding his practice to include aspects of music therapy through sing-along sessions and drumming circles. Welcome, Joe and Doug. Joe, I understand you've been using the Every Victory Counts manual, the original one, for quite some time now. When you first got the book, what was your initial reaction? Well, initially, it seems like a lot of material. It's over 300 pages of information. And <clears throat> but I also realized that there was a, a very detailed table of contents at the front end, which allowed you to either zoom in and find something you're looking for, or you can go ahead and read from beginning to end. So that, that made it easy to find stuff I wanted to read about right now, is look in the table of contents. Mm -hmm. And in the back is also an index, which is more refined, showing you key topics that you want to look at and where they are located within the book. It makes it very easy to get through. Okay. And did you did you like the personal stories that you saw? Oh, yeah, there's over 160 quotes from people that have Parkinson's throughout the book. It humanizes the medical information. It makes it very friendly to, to walk through and very personal as well. And I got to know quite a few of the people that were quoted in the book with my work through David Finney Foundation. So it's like seeing friends in the book and them telling us their stories. Right. Our Canadian book has got our quotes in it now. Right. And, and you know what, you are right, it is a really big book. And I can imagine it can feel quite overwhelming. So how did you manage digesting so much information? And what advice would you give to someone who's opening their Every Victory Counts manual for the very first time? Well, decide the best way that you normally learn. Do you learn from a targeted approach and zero in and look at the table of contents and find something that you're really interested in and do it piecemeal like that? If you're someone that needs to know the whole picture up front, then you basically want to read it from front to back and then go through it the second time. I, I did the read front to back the first time I got it and really enjoyed it. And today I have it set up in a three ring binder. So it's easy for me to leaf through. This is a sixth edition American one, still waiting for my Canadian one. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can see it's well used and I, make an awful lot of notes on the inside as well. The forms that Kelly was talking about are excellent for preparing for your meetings with the doctors or just doing a self-evaluation of different aspects of Parkinson's for your own, own well-being. Yeah, and you know, when we spoke before, you had mentioned how the every victory counts um, motto really resonated with you. Can you speak to that? Yeah, it's because, you know, we're, we're not, in our, living with this disease, you got, you're doing a lot more short-term things than long-term things. You know, you're not going to, uh, you know, stand up and yell that you're cured one day. You're just going to try to do the best you can every day. So every day you want to celebrate those small victories. And that's a big model with Davis Finney Foundation is just doing the victory, big V and saying, hey, I want to have something today. It might be as simple as getting bow socks on the right feet or, or doing a good long hard walk and, and working through that way through your workout program or just enjoying some nice time with friends in the program. Yeah, that's friends. a really, yeah, that's a really great way to look at it. And it, well, I think once you start celebrating the smaller victories, it becomes more motivating to move on to bigger challenges and, and being able to celebrate those as well. Um, I have a question for you, Doug. Um, so as a support group facilitator, how do you use Every Victory Counts in that role as a facilitator? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for having me um, to take part in this webinar today. Um, we use, I actually call the, the Every Victory Counts manual our Bible. So it's, it's our good book. It really is. Um, like Joe said, 
there's an overwhelming amount of information out there and the disease itself is overwhelming. So when you're first diagnosed with Parkinson's, which, which I've never been diagnosed with Parkinson's, but I've worked with people for so long that I, I, I feel like I have a lot of empathy towards people who have Parkinson's and have a little more understanding than the average person. And so to have in one place, all this information that is listed out under uh, chapters, um, it's fantastic. It, it really is. And, and like, I'm, I'm amazed that Joe was able to, to work his way through the whole book in, in you know, one go, which is great. Um, not everybody's going to want to do that, right? Because it's, it's, it's a lot of information right there. Um, but as a, in regards to the support group, I can't think of a better source of information that people can have in their hands to bring with them to the meetings. And to be honest, it can be difficult finding speakers. Like, um, for our support groups. We often go out and we try to find people who will come and talk to our support groups, especially during COVID, then it became almost impossible besides the fact that a lot of, you know, most in-group kind of sessions stopped. So instead of always relying on trying to find a speaker, which has its own down, downfalls in that when you're set up, when everybody's sitting there watching a speaker, it becomes almost like a theater environment where everybody kind of stops talking and they just listen to this person at the front of the room talk. And you don't get that interplay, which is what a support group really should be about. So I find by introducing the, the, the manual, um, especially the worksheets that come, worksheets that uh, Kelly alluded to, um, it's just a fantastic source. And we can work through one chapter at a time, which we've been doing in our support group. And now that it's got the Canadian um, aspect to it, we've got, we even got a quote from Joe in there. It's been, it was, I was excited to see that. Um, it's really great because then it, it just focuses everything down. We can just say today, let's just talk about um, exercise. So we'll work through the exercise book. Um, once everyone has their hard copies again, it's going to be fantastic. Um, the, the new copies, every, uh, I make sure everybody has one and they bring them with them. And, and it gives them the, um, the option to do a little homework at home to prepare for the support group as well. So as a support group facilitator, it's, it's huge because it allows me to have that resource right there that we can kind of work through. Absolutely. Especially yeah, and, with the versions. Yeah. And, and I guess now having the Canadian version that, that's going to reference the Canadian drugs, it'll make some of those uh, conversations you may have about medications a lot more meaningful for people in your group. Yeah, I think Joe and I were the first two Canadian ambassadors for the Davis Finney Foundation. And um, it was because of this manual that I wanted to become an ambassador in the first place. I was so overwhelmed with, with how incredible this book is. Um, but I, I feel sorry for some of the staff that, uh, not Polly so much, I haven't bothered her, but some of the staff like Sarah and Everett, I'm always like, the first thing that something comes out, I, I, I always ask the same question, does it relate to us as Canadians? And 90% of the time it, it doesn't. If it's, if it's, it's a new um, medicine or it's a new, um, you know, some, some new thing that's come out. And so I'm always on them. Is this Canadian? And poor Sarah's like, no, I'm sorry, it's not. But so, um, yeah, so I was really thrilled to hear that, that there's going to be this Canadian aspect to the book is, is really great. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to being a support group facilitator, you're also a Parkinson's exercise programming provider. So yeah. how has what, what's been included in the manual and what it says about exercise and wellness, how has that translated into the programs that you've developed? Well, like I say, 14 years ago, when I met one lovely lady with Parkinson's, I knew nothing about Parkinson's. I knew Michael J. Fox, who comes from uh, um, British Columbia. I knew that he had Parkinson's. And all I knew that is he, he kind of shook a little bit and moved a lot. That's all I knew about Parkinson's. So I fell in love with this gal. We, I took it upon myself to learn as much about Parkinson's as I could. And at that time, they had a little bit of understanding about the importance of exercise with Parkinson's, but nothing like it, like where they've gotten to now with the research and, and the just the everyday kind of um, anecdotal kind of responses to exercise. So I developed my own little program based upon what I was able to, to learn. And ironically, I learned a lot from a fellow named John Argue who had a book. He was a drama teacher. He was an actor and he wrote this book. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, but um, and it was fantastic. So I learned a lot from that. And then as programs became available, like Becky Farley through the University of Arizona created the Power Moves. Well, of course I jumped on that and I went to um, get certified as a Power Moves instructor. Then I went to Indianapolis to become a rock steady boxing um, instructor, uh, trainer, coach. So as these things kind of developed, it kind of went hand in hand, which what I was already noticing. Um, that exercise was helpful for people with Parkinson's. And now all of a sudden these programs are being developed that took, you know, what I was noticing was happening and, and, and 
put the research behind it. And I was so thrilled to see how the section on exercise in the, in the Every Victory manuals um, uh, book kept growing. And now we're up to over 20 pages, I think, just dedicated to exercise. And they, and they have, they talk about dance, they talk about boxing, they talk about all kinds of aspects. They talk about forced exercise, which was first discovered by using tandem bicycles. So all of that really specific exercise stuff for Parkinson's is in there. You can find all kinds of information where they say you should exercise and that's all you hear. Well, what kind of exercise? How hard, you know, and how how will my medication affect the exercise? And will exercise affect the efficacy of the medication? It's in the book. It's all in there. So that's it's fantastic. So don't just, you know, I don't want information about vague, go out and exercise three times a week. That's what you get with all kinds of the other sources of information. This book tells you how and when, how often, all the information you need to know to go out and do it and give yourself the best chance of living your best life with Parkinson's through exercise. Mm -hmm. And so you've mentioned the efficacy on some of the symptoms uh, of Parkinson's. As a program provider, what kind of uh, differences do you see perhaps in the mental health of the people who have Parkinson's when they participate in exercise? It's, it's, I can't stress enough the importance of it, not just for the actual physical benefits, but the, the social aspects of the exercise, they come, these folks come to my class, I offer them five days a week. Um, some of them come at least up to three or four times a week. It's like coming to, their, to, to, to a, um, a support group every time you come out. It's the best kind of support group where you sweat and you play basketball, you do all this fun stuff, right? It isn't doom and gloom. It's fighting back, right? It's, it's giving the people a joyful way to fight back against Parkinson's and they get results, but they also see their friends week in and week out. So that's absolutely huge um, that I find. So, so the mental and physical aspects are both just as important. And don't forget Dr. Mishley out of Seattle, who um, is this wonderful lady and, and a, a holistic doctor. She said the number one um, reason that people will find with people with Parkinson's will find that their symptoms kind of come on stronger is if they stay at home and don't get out and socialize with other people. And I take that to heart. I really firmly believe that. So, so if there any way that people can get off the couches, find whatever works for them. I mean, we just started a pickleball program in Parksville now for people with Parkinson's and that's another way to do it, right? So find some way to get out there and move your body because honestly, you don't have an option. You've got to do it if you wanna live a good life with Parkinson's. You don't really have a choice. You've, exercise is medicine, it's, it's just as important. That's so true. Um, Joe, I've got a question for you. So as a person living with Parkinson's who has been using the manual for a while now, what portions of the manual did you personally find the most helpful? Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess the portion that's kind of helpful is whatever I'm dealing with right at this time. But what I like is that every portion of the manual is backed up by a medical, um, some medical expertise, the person is is told what, how he got certified. So the doctor's credentials are explained and then it also talks about how that has, how that art has affected someone with Parkinson's. So you get to see both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. um, the practitioners that created the information and the participants that are using the information and get their both reaction, which I think is very important. Just like Doug was saying, you know, exercise is our only real defense against to, to prevent the progression to go too fast and to lose our quality of life. And it's something we have to take personal responsibility for. And, you know, you can find a lot of motivational um, bits in the book, but to get you back on track and get you back out there. And not every community is as lucky as uh, where Doug is to have him out there developing programs. I think he's Drumming program just got certified recently, didn't it, Doug? Pardon me? Your drum, drumming program, did you get that certified recently? Uh, not, I'm did still working know? on that. It's called Dopa Beats, and we just we used African hand drums. But um, I'm, I'm, luckily enough, I'm going to be presenting at the, um, in, in, at the BC Parkinson's Society coming up. I'll be doing a little thing. But I haven't got it certified, but, but we've been doing online classes. It's gone great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a very friendly book once you get inside of it. Don't be, don't be afraid by the volume. Just get in the pages, get in between there and see what's written there. Mm -hmm. What, what uh, Joe, what are your go-to uh, worksheets, perhaps? Like, which ones do you really rely on the most? The self-assessment and preparing for the doctor meeting. 
because mm -hmm. I think I'm just like anybody else. You know, I, I get a little nervous when I get in to see the neurologist. I have the privilege of working with Dr. Anthony Lang, who's one of North America's best. He's a very friendly guy, but I still get nervous in front of him. And I'll forget what I need. So I like to have it all written down. So I have the questions that I wanted to ask him or ask his intern, you know, I want to have them written down so that I'm ready for the meeting. And like Kelly was saying, you got to start a couple of weeks ahead of time when you want to write that in. And so you're, you're focused when you get there. Mm -hmm. So, and also the explanation of everything, anything you want to know is explained in there. So go to the index, look it up, read over the page, and also you'll understand what dyskinesia, you know, um, and all those different words mean. And you can talk the talk with the professionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you've mentioned before when we were chatting that that the section on apathy really resonated with you and kind of got you off the couch. Um, how did how did that section impact you? Yeah, just explain to me how normal apathy would what is with this disease, and that it's nothing to be personally ashamed of. You just gotta kick yourself off the couch and get going again. And knowing that it's not a good road to stay on because apathy can lead to depression and other mental disorders. So it's important to recognize when you're that close to the edge. I always say, I like to live further away from the edge than that because the edge is a quick drop off when you stop doing your physical exercises or you stop exercising yourself mentally. So that's, you know, when you read that clear statement about apathy, it's, it's not like it's 10 pages about apathy. It's only a half a page. It really makes it clear what apathy is and how to deal with it. And I imagine it must be really have been challenging forcing yourself to do those things when you just didn't feel like it at the time. But once you did and you started doing things like going out and doing your, your exercising, how did you stay motivated? Well, two years ago, I, I decided to try to do a million steps of trail walking in my neighborhood <laughs> over the summer from May until September. Awesome. And that was her, and I recorded every day from my Fitbit and my iPhone how many steps I took that day. And I got my million done. And that was a real motivator. But it, it took so much time. I haven't been able to do it again over the summer. Because once you start doing that much walking, I mean, I felt great. And at the end of the summer, I, I had my weight down to the right level. And I felt terrific. But it certainly took a long time to do that. So sometimes you want to except some of the challenges. I mean, the David Spinney Foundation and Parkinson's Canada just do a lot of challenges every month, get out and do something. So stay in touch with the organizations, and look for what they're suggesting you do this month. I know July, there are a lot of challenges with David Spinney Foundation to do cycling or join groups or keep active. And you know, that's the way, you keep in touch, keep in touch with the websites. Just the book isn't the only resource. The book can lead you to a lot of other resources and meet people and, compare activities and see what your results are compared to theirs. I guess that's true that technology has come a long way and it can actually hold you yourself accountable because technology will tell you how many steps you've done, for instance. But um, I think there's also something that can be said about joining a class as, as um, Doug had mentioned, joining a class where other people who are also living with Parkinson's, having that social aspect, and there's also some accountability there if they don't see you for a week or two. Yeah. We lost our boxing program with COVID, and since then, the instructors left and so we're, we're going to go out tomorrow, actually, Lanny Thomas and I, and try to get, and we're going to go to another boxing club and see if we can get our boxing program going. Because I got boxing equipment downstairs, but I don't touch it very often. Well, when you're in a class, you're right. The class carries you forward, and you exercise more than you would if you're down in the basement by yourself. So it's very important to develop those connections and programs in, in your community, you know, so that you can encourage other people to get out. Because when you have 14 people, all with Parkinson's or caregivers, in the same room, there's no one that's looking at you weird or gonna laugh at what happens or they just help you get up if you fall or if you miss something, they help you along the way. And it's a very excellent group of people. And you're all looking at life the same way. Right, and, and I think that that's something to be said about having that group 
experience where you have that camaraderie and you have that lack of isolation. Um, and so you just know that you're, whatever you're going through, if, if you happen to trip, everyone else, the same thing has happened to it, to them as well. Um, Doug, so um, what feedback have you gotten from your group members about the manual? Um, for a long time, the manual has been treated like gold. It really has. And it's been, when a new edition has come out, it's, it's like, woo, it's exciting. Uh, and especially this new Canadian version, it's just fantastic. Um, so we haven't used the worksheets until last, in the last few months actually, um, that, were, that had been developed, but we've always kind of touched on the book because um, we use a combination. We, we often use the Parkinson's Canada webinars, which are fantastic. Um, use different sources, but the book's always kind of been there, but I've never been as focused as I am now on it because of these worksheets uh, are fantastic. But just to give you an example, I had one of my boxers came up the other day and he said that he had had a melanoma had been removed and everything is great. But he said he went home that night and he, for some reason, he picked up the EVC manual and he said there was a great section on Parkinson's and melanoma. And he didn't realize until he had read that, that people with Parkinson's sometimes are more uh, susceptible to melanomas. So he was really excited. He goes, it's in there. He was, he was like, this is the only place, that, no, my doctors never told me about this. So, so he was thrilled that there was a concrete, you know, right in the book. And so, so that's a great example of someone using the resource. They can go back to time and time again, and maybe find information that the doctor either doesn't know or, or never told them. Doctors need to know about everything, right? this book just focuses on Parkinson's. So there's, there's no way that every doctor and every neurologist is going to know everything that's in this book. So I, I, and I think a good doctor is one that will admit that they don't know everything about Parkinson's and they're willing to learn and listen to you. So the fact that it's in this book and everything in this book is not BS, right? We talk about BS with Parkinson's, that a lot of BS out there. This is the real deal. So, so, so I think we trusted my group members trust this book and they listen to what I tell them because they trust me. And I, and, um, and so, so it's, that's, that, that trust has taken years to develop. And so when I put my, my, um, my beliefs behind something like the every victory count manuals and then they, they believe it too. And it's, and it's, it's great. So, so that's just one little example for sure. Of, of, yeah. And yeah. you've mentioned about, BS. Um, there is actually a section in the book, the medical BS detector. You can say um, it, Donna. And... Go, you can say it in the book. <laughs> so, um, so what can you say about that particular section of the book? Well, it's great. It, I'll give you an example. I, I get excited when I hear about new things um, coming out. I, I like nothing better than to be out of a job, to be, to have Parkinson's gone and I'll have to find a new career. That would be great stop working with then I won't have to work with people with Parkinson because nobody has it but that's going to take a while so when I see something new come out sometimes I let myself get a little too excited and I send it out to my group and it turns out I never should have that's happened a couple times um, where I've sent out something that's come down the pike but it's just some thing that turns out that is is just a money-making scam um, it doesn't happen very often, but there has been a couple of times where, you know, I've been very busy and I, I try to get as much information out that's coming out new. So, um, so I think it's great that the book itself has a section on that to help people educate themselves about what is, what is BS and what is real, right? So it's out there. There's people that are going to try to make money, unfortunately, in every, every kind, of, kind of way. Just yesterday, I had a lady from Africa want to give me $5 million and I was going to contact her for my money. But, you know, I know that's BS, right? <laughs> that's just an example. That stuff's out there. So what? just because you have Parkinson's doesn't mean that people aren't going to try to, um, to uh, abuse your, your um, curiosity, you know? Yeah. So, so, so I think it's yeah. great that they actually have a section on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's curiosity and there's also that, that hope for a cure so um, I, it's true. There's so much information and a lot of misinformation about Parkinson's floating around. So it really is best to work together with your healthcare team, especially when you're hearing about new potential treatments. So my last question will be for both um, Doug and Joe. How do you think the Every Victory Counts manual can empower people to move towards a more person-centered approach to managing their own Parkinson's? Doug, you wanna go first? Sure. Um, I think like exactly what Kelly showed us, you've got those worksheets that you fill out, you know, take your time to fill them out, take them to the doctor, 
don't just go to the doctor and say, you know, and, and without being having a plan. So, so the power is in, in your court using this resource, you can, you can really work through it. And instead of just being a doctor focus, all of a sudden it's, it's a, it's, it's a two way street where you're able to ask the right questions and get, get the, uh, get the results, the answer, the questions, or the answers that, that you need for the questions that pertain to you particularly. So use the book to help educate yourself about what you need to talk about. Mm-hmm. How about you, Joe? Well, as a Davis Finney, um, working through them, I probably received about 50 or 60 books from them and I distribute around my community here. So my doctor has one, my dentist had one, my pharmacist, and my doctor then asked for a couple more to give to patients that he had who were working through Parkinson's. So I'd like to get it out as much as we can to people that, that can use the information. It's just the same thing with the melanoma. I had a melanoma scare on my, on my skin and I, my doctor said, why do you want to have this test? And I said, because it's in the book and it could be connected. So and luckily it, it wasn't a problem, but you know, it does alert you to those strange things that are happening. And sometimes helps you differentiate whether it's something to do with the Parkinson's or not with Parkinson's. But I know, and I know some people of high profile, I guess, that want to stay anonymous and but want to know the information. I've, given a few books out like that to people that were uh, high profile but want to be anonymous until they're ready and but they need to know the information about Parkinson's that they can talk to the doctor about and giving them a copy really reassures them that they can start managing their 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 condition Mm -hmm. yeah I I think that that would be true for anyone that that having that manual it allows you to backtrack and check things that you have been told to make sure that what you are being told about your Parkinson's is accurate. And I think also it will inform you so that you can have more robust conversations with your healthcare professionals, ask the questions that need to be asked and and make informed decisions when when there are choices to be made. Sure. So Joe and, yeah, Joe and Doug, I wanna thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and insights into how the manual can empower people to take control over their Parkinson's care and to truly celebrate every victory. I'd now like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar sponsored by MERS Therapeutics and Paladin Labs and a very special thank you to today's presenters Karen Lee, Polly Dawkins, Kelly Williams, Joe Vancouverdin and Doug Picard. A hyperlink to the electronic versions of Every Victory Counts manual was included in your webinar confirmation email. It will also be in our follow-up email along with a link if you want to order a hard copy. That email which will also include a link to a recording of this webinar will be sent to you in about a week's time. Next month's webinar is a social event and everyone is welcome to join us. On Wednesday, August 24th, we'll be hosting a summer sing-along and trivia event. Not to worry, everyone who joins us will be muted. So only you will hear yourself singing along to some popular tunes from the 60s through the 80s. We'll also test your knowledge about entertainment and products from years gone by and some cool summer facts. Watch your email inboxes for more details and a registration link. On behalf of all of us at Parkinson Canada, I'd like to thank you again for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.